Hi friends, welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy and welcome to video number 62, how to make a triptych in two stages. So you saw the nice picture at the beginning. Uh, some of the colors and the color palette for the vine are similar to ones we've just used before or I've used before in my previous videos. So I'll run through those ones quickly, but there are a couple of changes in the colors to the flower. So we're doing the lovely one, two beginning of this little piggy, one, two of being the uh, this little piggy interference twinkle, which is an interference uh, blue and violet. And then enchantment here, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous light lavender color that has a flash of, flash of kind of bluey purpley really. But those two are going down first. Then we're doing the uh, tube paint and our usual favorite right now, the gold, uh, the Rust-Oleum gold mine rather. There we go, gold mine. Uh, just so we can break up uh, the, uh, the, the pigments because we're about to put three in a row down and it's the three, the lovely, and let me hold it the right way. Could have practiced this before, I guess, but here we go. It's the lovely three combo of s'mores, seaweed, and asparagus by TLP. Now those are actually gonna make uh, the vine behind the flower. Uh, we're gonna be using just a little bit of this mixed up into our pouring medium uh, after the asparagus, uh, just for our white cell activator to sit on and just give it something to bite on so it doesn't sink immediately through those pigments. So yeah, that is the vine part. And now the flower part is again, another little daub, a little bit of the Rust-Oleum gold mine because it's a great, uh, great tube paint to put down first for our piggies to sit on. And then we're gonna be using this one, Venus. And I'm guessing Venus is transparent, semi-transparent. It's this lovely, lovely, beautiful kind of pinky, pinky rose gold color. And then we're going to use a little bit of this one, the golden light phthalo blue. And this one is the opaque right there. Then we're going to be using another one of my favorites. It's semi-transparent and it's uh, Athena. There we go, let me hold it up the right way. Athena. Uh, beautiful kind of um, uh, rose gold kind of color. Absolutely fantastic. And then again, something for our cell activator to sit up on, we're going to be putting some of this down. It's the Liquitex, uh, the gouache, uh, and it is, oh, you can still see it's semi-opaque uh, semi there, half the square is filled in. Uh, and I mixed a small amount of um, TLP Comet in this, just to give it a bit more, a bit more zazz. Before we then, again, a little tiny drizzle of the white uh, cell activator to finally make the flower. Okay, my friends, thank you very much. I'm gonna zip it. We're gonna get the camera pointing down and we're gonna start painting, okay? So then friends, I guess the first thing you're gonna notice is that this is, we're doing the triptych in two parts and we're doing the two six inch squares first. And you can see I laid down some pillow there. No more than, uh, no more than about maybe three, three and a half ounces or so, around about 100 milliliters. Remember when we're doing the small canvases or cradles like this, we want to be pretty careful with how much pillow we put down, because if we put too much down, when we spin it out, we're just going to lose all of our design off the edges and just end up <laughs> with white canvases, really. So yeah. Be careful how much you put down. When doing smaller canvases, you want to use far less pillow, especially if like this, we're gonna be adding quite a few colors down. So you can see me just spreading out the pillow there with a little palette knife. I've seen people that uh, just leave the puddle of paint in the middle of their cradles or canvases and then start to do their designs with the colors. But uh, I find sometimes it can leave a small kind of drying ring where obviously the uh, canvas or cradle that has the paint on it is absorbing it faster than the sides that doesn't. And I don't like those rings, so I just spread it out. So this is the first color we're putting down, friends. It is the lovely Twinkle by TLP, this little piggy. It's a gorgeous interference color and interference blue uh, one way, and when you look at it another way, it's this beautiful violet color. So as you can see, my paints are a little bit thick. These ones were a little bit old. 
but I decided to use them. And as you can see from the end result, they performed very well indeed. So the next color I'm putting down, friends, it's going to be the TLP and Enchantment, the beautiful lilac color with a gorgeous kind of blue flash to it, I believe. But sometimes I see a little red. It's a bit confusing for me. But as we know, guys see colors differently than the ladies. So the next one I'm putting down here, friends, this is uh, one of my favorites, the Rust-Oleum Gold Mine. Uh, it's the Rust-Oleum Metallic Accents. Uh, it's a fantastic, highly pigmented paint and is a great separation in between our piggies. But as you can see, it, it itself is a little thick too. But as we find out, it was just on the cusp and it was just usable and made a beautiful, a beautiful bloom and design. So this next color down, it's our favorite, another favorite, S'mores by TLP. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, deep, rich, bronzy, brown, goldy kind of color and uh, is absolutely beautiful. And I find this color palette really does mimic uh, organic, organically, or it does mimic a uh, plant, basically. For me, it does anyway, but I guess I it will because I created it. So the next color we're going to put down, my friends, it is Seaweed by TLP. It's a nice kind of deep green kind of color with some gorgeous mica in it, giving it a beautiful flash of gold. And it's gonna be a nice base for our slightly lighter color asparagus that's gonna be going on next. And here it is. So after we've put that asparagus on, and as you can notice actually, I haven't used a lot of paints. We wanna keep this design on these two six by six cradles. Here we go down now with the uh, Amsterdam white. The titanium white just mixed in my pouring medium. Uh, and it's something nicer for the cell activator to sit up on and grab and give us nice cells rather than sinking immediately into all of those pigments we've just laid down. So I'm just what? I'm just mixing up my cell activator, the white cell activator, the Shelly Art recipe. If you'd like to know what Shelly Art is, please check out the website on the bottom of the screen. It's an online course where she gives in-depth uh, instructional tutorial videos into how to bloom and swipe and recipes. It really is a valuable course and I highly recommend it. And I also have a 15% discount code as you can see on the screen now. So in we go for the blow here guys. Just blowing the sides out, blowing down into the cell activator and then across to hopefully give us something that looks a little bit like leaves. We've got some nice cells popping up there. Excellent, looking pretty good. So just giving the center of the vines just a little blow, hopefully help that cell activator to sink and give us some more cells. Blowing it out just a little bit more. While I do this, I would just love your attention for a minute, please, my friends. Anybody that hasn't subscribed and they're just watching as a guest in YouTube, my videos, I please ask you to subscribe to my channel. It doesn't take you much. It doesn't cost anything. All YouTube wants is your email address so you can set up an account and then you can actually like and comment on my videos and you'll also be able to participate in my live shows that happen every Sunday at 1 p.m. PST on my channel here, Frosty Eye Candy. The show, Joy of Pouring, the first episode was last week and was 
very, very popular indeed. We had some great interaction and some great fun, lots of people watching. And I'd also like to thank everybody that's re-watched the live show. Uh, it's helped me tremendously. I greatly appreciate you. And thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. But the subscribers, please, if you can like my videos, you'll be able to press the black notification button and that will then notify you every time I release a new video. But please, mentioning the joy of pouring, please join me this Sunday, 1 p.m. PST, the joy of pouring with Cyfrost. So as you can see here, friends, I'm just doing some little modifications to the bloom vine. I'm dragging some of these leaves out and then some of them in, make them look a little more organic and give it a more kind of leafy vine feel. And while we're also just watching me do this, I'd love to tell you about my Facebook store that is opening. Uh, it's open right now and it has many wonderful pieces. Many of these pieces that you see me uh, create in these instructional videos are for sale and they're listed and available on my Facebook shop. So please just go to my Facebook page, Frosty Eye Candy, and then you can click on the shop tab at the top and it will take you to my store where you can see all the wonderful things that are for sale. And it would be a great way to help and support me by buying some art because you get something out of it too. <laughs> and I am able to buy some more materials. So I'm just doing the last little modifications here and there, little spirals, little swirls. And while I'm still just doing this, oh, that little swirl came out beautifully. While I'm doing, still waiting for me to finish these little modifications, I'm gonna tell you about our Facebook group if you do not know about it. It's called Acrylic Pouring for Beginners. If you go into Facebook and you search, search for the words that are on the bottom of the screen right now, and I'll also flash up a little picture in the screen showing you what the page looks like and what our group logo looks like. Please join us, it's a safe space for you to share your work, get positive and constructive feedback, and feel safe doing so. I'd love to give a shout to my fellow conductors, Christy, Darren and Bridget, helping keep this safe space a beautiful, amazing space. And not forgetting our main man, Amunji, the leader, the train driver. Thank you to all of you guys. So I think we're getting just about there with the modifications. Just a couple more little ones here and there. Excellent, I think we are about done. So what I'm doing now, friends, is I'm wetting the edges of the canvas for those that don't know and any beginners that are watching. We call this wetting the edges, where you just get a little of the pillow on your finger and just nicely wet the edges of the cradle or the canvas that you're working on. Because when we spin, this helps the surface tension of the paint meet the edge of the canvas and then flow over down the edge nicely. And uh, as you can see, my board that is mounted on my spinner will catch all the paint really nicely and uh, there's no need for a big mess. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this. And in we go for the first spin. Again, for the beginners or those just joining us or even for the more experienced artists, I love leaving my spins in real time so you can see how long and how fast I spin for. Wow. I think we can safely say we had just the right amount of pillow paint and colors. That's glorious. I'm very happy with that. Absolutely lovely. We've got some beautiful cells there. We've got some beautiful leaf with the cells. And the composition is looking pretty good. I'm just grabbing with my palette knife a couple of little edges and wetting the edges of the canvas 
So on the second spin, we get a lovely even flow. But yes, this is beautiful. The enchantment and the twinkle seem to have bordered the vine quite beautifully on both sides. Here we go, just checking for movement. Oh, and there we go. There's a lovely flash of the twinkle and the enchantment. So, excellent, here we go for spin number two. And this is the anti-clockwise spin. I'm not too sure how important this actually is, that you spin one way and then the other. It's something I've always done, and I have good results with it, so I see no need in missing out steps of my process that seem to work well. But yeah, I'm great on the second spin. The vine's grown nicely. We've got some beautiful cells over the edge just there that you saw. And gorgeous, here we go for the nice close-up. Look at those piggies ringing, uh, bordering the vines so beautifully and the vines themselves shimmering. Absolutely gorgeous. So here you go. As you'll see, the vine here joins in the middle on those two canvases, right in the middle of those two canvases. So as long as we're clever, we're gonna be able to make the third that goes in the middle and make it join up beautifully. So here we go for the middle part of the triptych, the part with the actual flower. Now you see I've left the pillow just as a ring this time because we're not using a fresh canvas. This is an old one that I'm painting over. So that was the TLP twinkle that went down there. And please notice we're doing this right in the middle because we'd like the two smaller canvases to sit nicely either side right in the middle. So as long as we keep this line, they should match up pretty nicely. So that one we were just putting down was the enchantment again. And now here we go in with the gold, the Rust-Oleum metallic accents. I'm quite lucky I live in Canada and this is available in Home Depot in a nice quart pot. I've heard and had messages saying it it's not available in that size in the States and they can only get smaller versions. So I'm sorry for that. Here we go guys, this is now the TLP and this is the s'mores again. So we're just basically copying the vine exactly for a background to do the bloom right in the middle on, okay? So this is now the um, seaweed going down, the mid green from TLP, shimmery green. And now this one is the asparagus. If you'd like to know where we get, where you can get your TLP pigments from, I'll flash the web address up on the bottom of the screen now. It's the only place you can actually get them. Fluid-art.co. Fantastic new company, small business, and I highly recommend them. They have the best business business ethic and customer service. So that was just a little thin drizzle of the uh, Amsterdam Titanium White mixed in my pouring medium for the cell activator that I'm now putting on to sit on. Excellent, now time to give this a blow out. Excuse the back of my head momentarily. <laughs> it's very difficult to get a good angle for viewing and not get in the way when you're actually blowing out the vines or the bloom. But here you go. We'll go nice in for a close up on that, thank you, Sire. And wow, looking very good. Excuse my head again. <laughs> just blowing out the vine just a little more, but we've got some fantastic cell action. The cell activator really grabbed onto that white in the pouring medium and has reacted beautifully, giving us some great vines, some great cells and some great leaves. Fantastic. I said it before and I could say it again. I love watching these cells pop up, watching the cell activator sink. It's, it's really a good treat. Okay, so here we go to do the bloom. 
This is now the uh, Pastolium gold mine again, just a small little, small little blob, something for the pigments to sit on so they don't sink into the pillow paint. And here we go in now with the TLP. This one's Venus. Remember guys, small amounts, we don't want the balloon to take over. Now this one, it's the golden white phalo blue. Again, small amount. Now we're going in with the TLP and this is the gorgeous Athena. And now I'm gonna go in with the Liquitex, the fluorescent opera pink gouache. Just a nice tube paint to give us an activator something to sit on and not sink immediately. And hopefully make a nice pretty bloom. Just giving my CA a good stir up guys. And in we go with the white CA. Excuse the back of my head while I blow this out. But excellent, there we go. We've got a very pleasing flower shape. It's come out quite well. And it's looking fantastic. I love watching the cells pop up and the cell activator sink. It's always a great entertainment for me. So in we go with some modifications. Just kind of modifying the vine so the same way that we modified the two six inch pieces so they marry up nicely we've used exactly the same paint and we've got the design nicely centered so this should make for a great triptych while we're watching me do these slight modifications i'd love to tell you about my facebook store if you'd like to go and take a look at my facebook page in one of the tabs at the top there it says store where you can see many of my creations from these videos for sale and available and i ship all over the world so in we go with the very easy modifications to make this gorgeous flower and really emphasize those petals there just simply dragging very gently through the top layers of paint trying not to go through to the white pillow at the bottom This is looking fantastic. And for the last little modification, the last petal. Trying to leave it alone now. <laughs> the trick to good modification is knowing where to modify, but also when to stop modifying. <laughs> Excellent. Design's looking very pretty. Seems to be working nicely. And as I said, we have the design centered beautifully. So it should really meet up and marry with those two six inch pieces of the vine that we did earlier. So right now I'm adding just a little more pillow paint. I was a little nervous there wouldn't be enough to make it to the edge and get nice coverage. So I'm just adding a little more here, just to the corners. It's always best just to add a little more pillow paint and waste it than spin the piece and not have enough movement and the design is ruined. So as you can see, I'm just taking my little palette knife here and just smoothing the paint out to the edges. Because if we try to spin like this, I find the pillow has to travel over dry canvas or you know the dry part of the actual cradle that we're using here and if we smooth it out to the edges it really aids the spin it helps the uh, water tension in the paint flow nicely to the edge of the canvas and then down over the sides so we can get some nice detail over those sides it's always nice to get some cell cell action over the sides is always nice Again, just trying to decide which way it looks best <laughs> and going in for the first spin. Again, friends, for those watching, beginners watching and those joining us for the first time, I always show my spins in real time so you can see exactly how 
fast and how long I spin for. As I've just mentioned, I like getting cells and details over the edge. So I spin for a little bit longer just to give that paint the extra chance to make it. Wow. <laughs> wow. It has really come out very well indeed. The flower is gorgeous. It almost looks like a orchid to me or something like that. But please tell me what you think in the comments. Just checking for movement, guys. Seeing if there's any more. And going in for the anti-clockwise spin. I'm not sure how important or relevant the two different spins are, but it's something I've always done and had good results with. And as these are instructional videos, it seems no, makes no sense to leave it out. Wow. Wow. I've said it a few times in my videos, but I really couldn't have asked this to come out any better. Just checking for movement here. But absolutely fantastic. Nice close up. Thank you for joining me, my friends. Please like, subscribe and share if you like what you see here. And as always, happy pouring.